Comcast IRL will be live in Miami with Patrick Bet David, Donald Trump Jr., Matt Gates, and Luke Rudkowski. Join us there. Get your tickets by clicking the link in the description below or by going to TimCast.com. This is from NBC News. Standing ovation for a Ukrainian who fought with Nazis sparks anger and an apology in Canada. I'd like to slow down for you all and just rephrase that headline, NBC News. Uh oh. How about Canadians give standing ovation to you to Nazi? Is that does that does that work for you guys? There you go. Yaroslav Hunka 98 was recognized by lawmakers shortly after Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky addressed the Canadian Parliament. Why are they celebrating a Nazi? This was very hard for me to understand. They said that they brought him there because he was a Ukrainian and Canadian hero. Canadian and, hero? Because he's living in Canada, so he has <laughs> you know residency there. But then very quickly said, oh, we actually forgot to do a background check and look him up, which if you compare this to the State of the Union, anytime they're like, and tonight with us is Andy No, a journalist, like someone has vetted this person. Surely that's why they are. They didn't just walk into the chamber and happen to take a seat. Right. Like the idea that this person was not researched beforehand either shows that the entire Canadian government needs to consider restaffing or that they were aware of this, but didn't understand the implications of well, they don't care. I think Canada does care. I think they are just uh, not aware of any sort of form of history. I think they are Nazis. You think all of Canada is Nazis? No, I think I think the people like Trudeau, mm -hmm. they 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 are Nazis. They they learn to to masquerade and shield their eugenicist racist policies and cheer for Nazis. So the big irony here is that the um, the Speaker of the House of Commons. Uh, uh, in the Canadian Parliament, so he's with the the Liberal Party. That's Trudeau's party. Uh, invited him and uh, the 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 Nazi war veteran. And apparently, all all they had to hear was that he he served uh, on a unit that that fought the USS, USSR, but didn't ask for their well on fighting against them on behalf of who? Well, fighting on behalf of the Nazis. It was an SS uh, unit. And um, it's, I mean, it's, you know, I guess people should remember that just uh, a year and a half ago, the January 2022, when the Canadian convoy protests were happening, uh, the Liberal government, Trudeau, condemned them and said that they were using Nazi symbolism and Nazi imagery and racism. And here they are um, now, um, Prime Minister Trudeau next to President Zelensky and the entire parliament giving a stand standing ovation to not just an accused Nazi or somebody who's accused of being far right, but an actual Nazi veteran. Yeah. He was a, uh, uh, um, he served in the 14th Waffen Grenadier Division of the SS, a Nazi military unit whose crimes against humanity during the Holocaust are well documented. Well, there you go, Canada. I think it's because they, they have no understanding of, of history, right? Right now, Russia is the big enemy. And so anyone who fought against Russia seems good. But they have very little understanding of actual World War II history. So they don't understand well, that. they do. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not willing to rule out that they do. But I just think a lot of it is someone said, oh, this would be a great viral moment where we stand up for this and they had no idea because they're just not well versed okay well you know i'm not going to give them the benefit of the doubt here let's, let's let's we'll do this okay so they're in canada what can i say it's canadian right but let's talk about here in the united states is the political uh, what, what what political faction is aligned with the uh with the canadian government in the united states right it's progressives right i'm not trying it's not a trick question in the united states trudeau is would be a progressive he would be aligned with the left and leftists to a great degree okay um, are leftists anti-Semitic? Yes, there's not, that's not a question. Yeah. You look at Black Lives Matter and their support, uh, or, or I should say, many of these prominent celebrities who, who supported Black Lives Matter and also support Farrakhan and the things he said, unsurprising. You look at the article from Tablet Magazine about when they went to the Women's March, the, the organizers, and were pushing anti-Semitic conspiracy theories, unsurprising. I just got to be honest. I would not be surprised if eugenicist anti-Semites who share political views happen to cheer for a Nazi. I mean, is that surprising to anybody? No, no. You're like, okay, no. so they're eugenicists. They want racial segregation. They, uh, uh, I, like, what, 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 what more are we supposed to argue here? That they, they use a different word for whatever it is there? Okay, fine. I don't care. Call them whatever you want. They're the same thing.
Uh, it's so funny to me that in a society where everything is racist or anti-Semitic, everybody uh, can get accused of this except for people who are aligned with supporting Ukraine, including the actual soldiers themselves. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, Russia goes the other direction. They try and claim that everything happening is denazification. And I'm like, that's stupid, too. Like, Russia is not invading Ukraine because there's Nazis there. Because you, they, they want access to Crimea. But you know Russia's now clipping this thing of Zelensky being there, <laughs> plotting the, <laughs> the actual uh, affiliated Nazi and being like, see, we told you we're here for denazification. It's also, the story has also become a, b- a big scandal in Poland because that particular unit that that, um, that elderly man uh, was part of was involved in a lot of a slaughtering of a lot of Poles. Mm-hmm. Yep. Well, but they Canada. didn't know. They didn't vet him. It's an accident. <laughs> That's the stupidest lie I've ever heard. Yeah. I just get like, how could you even pass that off? I mean, it's ridiculous. I can't say whether or not they're all anti-Semitic and eugenicists, but they're definitely stupid. Well, it's, uh, as, as I often say, it's the banality of evil or it's malicious evil. How many of them are actually maliciously anti-Semitic eugenicists? I don't know, probably a few, but they're smart enough to get a bunch of morons to clap and cheer for a Nazi. So all you need to understand about how stupid these people are and how dangerous they are is that they don't know or care who they are clapping and cheering for. Mm-hmm. It's like when Joe Biden said, Trinidad on a shot of pressure, and the crowd goes, yay, and they're all clapping and cheering, and you're like, this is crazy. Joe Biden goes on stage and says, bad calf care, and everyone's just clapping and cheering. <laughs> they don't know what he said. Mm-hmm. Uh, they just know they're supposed to clap, and so they right. did. It's frustrating to me that um, often quite uh, educated people are so, so they're, they're very good at recognizing propaganda from Russia and good for them for that and calling it out. But the propaganda that is coming out from Ukraine, it's like they just, th- there's no scrutiny of any of it. And there's so much propaganda, this whole, uh, you know, this well, one turning a blind eye to the contemporary connections to Nazi organizing in Ukraine. That's completely now no longer an issue to liberals around the world. Um, and then Ukraine now being reframed as this uh, bastion of liberal and progressive values when th- it's th- that's not the reality of what the what that country is, and nor nor their society. No, I think it's all political theater. I think so much of this is just people not willing to question Ukraine in any any uh, instance at all. And so you can't call it any propaganda because you're not allowed to doubt Ukraine's motives in anything. You're not even allowed to have any kind of doubt. You're supposed to submit entirely to supporting Ukraine and never question any of it. I mean, look how much money we have shipped over to Ukraine. Why? Because we're just supposed to. And those who do speak out are, are then smeared as uh, somehow fans of Russia or fans of um, uh, Putin. I mean, yeah, the, the smear tactics just causes people to become fearful. Mm hmm. And I think so much of it is just a lack of understanding of geopolitical history, right? They have no idea what the ties are. You know, they don't know what happened in Crimea. There's, they don't know what to say. They just know right now it's good to have your blue and yellow flag out and to agree with whatever Biden says and therefore whatever Zelensky says. Yes. They want a simple story of villains and heroes. Who's a good guy, good guy and who's a bad guy. Mm-hmm. And then it leads them to do stupid mistakes. I think it was a genuine mistake like what happened in the Canadian Parliament Oh, uh, a Ukrainian World War II hero veteran. Great. Let's invite him. You know, and they stop looking. Yes. And I think that's also a testament to the, the shortened attention span. I mean, I assume whoever vetted him is fairly young, working at, in a staff position for this elected official. And they think, oh, yeah, I read most of that headline and I know what I'm talking about. I don't think it matters. I don't, I don't think it matters at all that uh, whether it's a mistake or not. That's just it's at, at this point in the culture war. In this point in the war with with uh, with Russia and Eastern Europe, all that matters is what they do. If we sit around saying like, well, you know, that was a mistake every single time they scream and cheer for Nazis. It's like, OK, you're going you're gonna to be you're going to be giving the benefit of the doubt as uh, to them the entire way. It's like we're sitting in a car with these people and they're driving full speed, pedal to the metal, foot to the floor, right towards a cliff. And we're like, well, but hold on a minute. They're probably going to turn right they're not going to drive off the cliff. <laughs> they wouldn't do that. And then every single time it's. So at this point, I'm just like, I don't care what what they thought they were doing. This is what they do. It's who they are. That's it. So all I got, all I can say is, yes, Canadian Parliament gave a standing ovation to a Nazi. Yeah, but as I said, I don't care why they did it. They did it. Ukraine has become so good at playing the West like a fiddle. Like they're, you know, one of their spokespersons now is this transgender American. Not anymore, though. 
Oh, that change? I think they got rid of that person because of uh, the, the trans spokesperson threatened to kill anyone, you know, or so, something like that. Was that what happened? I can look it up, but I'm There's not like sure. There's like a video where okay. the... Okay, well, either was or until very recently, this transgender American spokesperson for Ukrainian military who doesn't even speak Ukrainian. Um, obviously, that's, you know, playing to the sentiments of the, the left in the United States. And then Ukraine's when, a colony of the United States. And then when Zelensky went to the UN giving a speech and talking about climate change. Oh, right. But listen, Ukraine is a colony of the United States. That's why an American English speaking leftist is the one talking about what's going on. It doesn't matter who is in Ukraine. NATO and the West don't care. And when you learn that the U.S. has been funding the businesses and everything in Ukraine, might as well consider Ukraine a colony of the United States. Just call it. I, I, I don't care for this, this, this wordplay that we have in modern politics, right? Where it's just like, well, you know, oh, not really. We don't call it that. Are we at war with Russia? Yes. In, in all form and function. But is it declared? Pfft, when was the last time the U.S. declared a war against anybody? We just go and do it. So you've got U.S. citizens volunteering with U.S. weapons, with U.S. training, with U.S. Uh, with with U.S. backed artillery and intelligence. And it's like, but it's Ukraine that's at war. Yeah, Russia doesn't think so, because practically it's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. And this is where we're currently at. Thanks for watching this clip from the Timcast IRL podcast. Hang out with us live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And become a member over at TimCast.com for uncensored members-only shows exclusive. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all next time.